Hello, I'm Lance Wallnow, and I'm looking forward to covering the news that's happening right now. I just watched the press conference with the president where he was talking to the Washington Post, a reporter who was irritating him because the president's trying to be optimistic. I mean, we just lost 4 million more jobs, bringing the total up to 20 million unemployed, which is uh, now we're leveling off with where we were during the Great Recession of 2008. And the president is, is doing what he's supposed to do. He's trying to find, like, like Roosevelt did in dealing with the Great Depression, we have nothing to fear but fear itself. But if Trump says, I believe that, that the sun will be good, it's good, the weather's good, and, and uh, we're going to begin to get outside from our quarantine, and right away a guy goes, well, we heard that uh, there's somebody that said, there's a report that's out that the sun could be bad, the warm weather could be bad, it could be just as bad. Look at Singapore, it's warm over there, and they're having a, re a return of this. So don't you think it's irresponsible to be talking about going out? The president goes, look, look, I'm not the authority. I've just got a brain. I'm thinking, you know, it's, there's other people that are talking about light therapies and heat therapies. I think the sunlight, the heat, it might be helpful. We'll let the experts here. These are experts. We'll let them talk. And the guy goes on. Well, I think in these press conferences, you have a responsibility to let the American people know. And he said, you know what? Let me tell you something. Great quote. I'm the president of the United States and you're fake news. Tell you what, those moments are priceless zingers. And, you know, he doesn't have to do this. He, he's doing all these press conferences because the guy's a genius at the fact that he's keeping in front of the people. Now, the people that don't like him are going to constantly not like him. He's just going to annoy them by being there. But the fact of the matter is no other president in the history of the United States ever was out winging it with reporters. I mean, they're always a control. Press conferences will take a few questions and, you know, they're bracing themselves and then they're off. And with Trump, it's, oh, let's go out there into the lion's den and let's go ahead and uh, see what happens. And he does it every single day. And, and, the, and, the, and they hate him for this. They hate him. They're, they're, they're saying he's using this thing as a political tool. They're only saying that because they recognize that he looks, he doesn't look so bad, actually. He looks like a normal, he actually looks like a kind of a relatable individual who is fully invested in solving a problem. And boy, I'll tell you what. I don't think there's a person in the United States that, um, that people, uh, I was worried about what happens with the economy because that's supposed to be his number one uh, you know, uh, asset in terms of re-election. But in reality, it goes the other way, too. Who in the world do you think could focus on business building and the economy and uh, deal-making and uh, tariffs? And who in the world could actually take that? This The guy who make, made the economic um, breakthrough happen is the only guy that can rebuild what, what has been lost. But the question you and I should be asking, and I know that you are asking this because you're an intelligent group, you're the most coached up group out there on the internet, you are probably asking, but what is the Lord doing, Lance? I'm going to tell you something. The Lord is sending a wake-up call to the United States. He's sending a wake-up call to the church. He's sending a wake-up call to you and me. You know what he's basically saying? He's saying, you could lose this whole thing. You could, this whole thing, I could pull the plug on this whole thing. In other words, God didn't wait till next year after the election. He's basically saying, hey, you might not even have Trump in office. You might have a, you might have a, a I'm sorry to say, but Biden is, is, is I, I don't know how they're going to run him. I don't know how they're going to run him because I think everybody knows that he's not there. And it's not, it's, uh, it's a, one, one person who's a very respected conservative wrote to me and said he just feels conflicted because it's, it's almost like an abuse of an individual to put him out on the campaign like this and nobody wants to really criticize him because it's, it's, you're watching the infirmity that comes to us all as we age. And so his prime was in the past. I remember him, uh, Biden, debating Paul Ryan. Oh, my God, he was sharp. He was focused. He was like, I was just, you know, it was like he had too many Red Bulls. The guy was just like, duh, 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 duh. but uh, something, you know, there's deterioration that happens over time. And it's like Trump said, he's lost his fastball. And uh, which is <laughs> the New York way of putting it. But uh I, I, I've always, and I told you before, I said, my big concern is that he's going to trot out Kamala Harris because Kamala Harris, because he's, took, he's all talking to Eric Holder and he's talking to Obama and he's talking to you, I guarantee he's talking to the Soroses and the people, and they're all, they're all Kamala Harris people. And because uh, that's, that's, she's going to, she's going to be the attack, uh, you know, the pit bull that's going to be there on the attack. Remember, she's the one that accused Biden of racism. And so she's just like no conscience out there. And so. It's going to be interesting, and I pray to God it isn't her, but I tell you what, I, sometimes I get these things and I'm accurate on them. you got to admit, I had Trump, but nobody thought it was Trump, and it was Trump. All right, so anyway, it's going to be, so it's, what is God saying? God's saying, are you, in, are you involved with my building project? Because uh, this is the moment in Haggai. I've been prophesying this. It's the Cyrus, Trump is a Cyrus, modern-day Cyrus. 
God's raising of Cyrus rulers in the earth because the sheep nations and goat nations are, are being formed right now. And God has shaken up the nations. And in, in, in Haggai, he said a prophet to his people and said, you know what, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just take a, I'm gonna cut a hole in your economic bag right now and get your attention. Boop, 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 God did all the money came out and everybody was stunned. They were in Jerusalem. They what they were doing. They were all working on their old panel houses. They're all working on their own benefits. They're all working on their own circumstance and promotion and their own agenda. And you know why they did it? Because they didn't sense that America was under threat. They didn't sense that America was under siege. And the Lord says, uh, this people says it's not time. This people thinks this is gonna go on forever. I gave you mercy in 2016. You could have gone into this. We could have gone into this in 2016. God gave us mercy. He gave us an economic blessing. What do we get? We get more obnoxious people with a more demonized press and more Christians. Ho oh, hum. And uh, and and and, and the, the president's in there. Finally, the Lord, I think, just said, "Okay, this whole thing can go down." That you say it's not time. Forget the election coming up. It's not about the election. It's about America if it's going to survive. I think He's got our attention, and I think that you know, there's nobody talking about repentance. Nobody really knows what to repent for. Uh, it's too bad I was on a call this week and I realized one businessman, a very wise businessman, is, and, and everybody's talking about the Great Awakening. Oh, Lance, the revival, the Great Awakening. Christians are all excited. The great Awakening, Great Awakening. I don't know what we're thinking uh, because the last thing you want is an awakening on the Titanic. I mean, you know, unless you're on a, unless you're on a boat getting off, it's not a good thing. Nobody, our generation has never gone through. Even the recession uh, didn't, didn't hit what the Great Depression did. I mean, you do that and, and it's a different game entirely. So I'm not that I'm not again, I'm, I'm not saying there's an awakening in the air. I'm saying that the awakening of, uh, in the air is there in the spirit if there's enough people that are going to press into the building project that God is on and God is on restoring America. You're not going to, you can't let these crazy people continue to control the discourse and direction of America because that you just saw what they did with like 20 or $27 trillion now debt. They, they, there's not a politician in America that is going to tell you, we're going to have to cut the budget here. We're going to have to cut some expenses. No, they're going to say, no, we're going to expand the expenses. Plus we're going to put more money. Like, they're like, it's like moronic. It's like a moronic gene is loose because every politician knows they get reelected by printing money in the basement. It never occurs to them that, uh, that you and I are going to hold them accountable for the idiocy that is bankrupting America because somebody's going to pay that bill and you know who's going to pay for the bill? Every one of you that has a job. Now you got a choice. You want to be in a, in a soup line or do you want to have a job? Well, you want to have a job, but guess what? They're coming for your money. And, and how are you going to pay for your house? And what's going to happen is as businesses fold, there is an awakening. I believe there's an awakening in the atmosphere. I believe there's a revival in the atmosphere, but this one businessman that was missing on the call, do you know why he was missing? I don't know, but I noticed he was missing because I was on a call earlier and, and what he said was, what about repentance? If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their way and basically confess their sins and turn, what is the sin that we've had? What is it that we need to turn from? I'm gonna say this again and again. Ministry in the United States has to turn from its self-absorption with promoting itself and start to worry about the nation get out and, and so look what god did he said i think i'm just going to shut down this i'm going to shut down wall street and i think what i'm going to do is i'll shut down broadway they're all obnoxious against me and i think i'm going to shut down uh, okay here we go we're going to shut down the godless school systems right now and we're not going to be chattering anymore about marxism and raising up uh, progressives and um and then the lord turns around oh this was a shock he said i think i'm going to shut down the churches that doesn't mean there aren't churches in parking lots but how many of you want to go to a parking lot and so, and then, and then you still got to figure out when you go back to church, how many people are going to go back to church when they're in the back of their head, they're thinking, I can't be like, uh, I got to stay six to nine feet away from people. And here comes sister so-and-so, you know, looking for a hug. I'm telling you, and people are going to want to be, there's going to be more like, I think I'll watch this from home. And so, um, but the fact of the matter is God just interrupted church. You guys, you guys sticking with me here? Stay with me now. Stay with me. I want you, this, this is one of the most enlightened rants that, uh, that I'm going to be doing all week because this is the truth. It's like someone said to me today, I can't believe you say the things you say. Well, that's because, um, that's because I'm not aware of what I said until after it came out of my mouth. I was thinking it and I was thinking, did I just say that? I can't believe I said what I was thinking. But that happens, I say what I'm thinking. Because you know, it's just me and my phone right now. I can get away with anything. So, uh, so here, here's the thought. Uh, the, the churches are close. So God's do, what's God doing there? Let me tell you what God is doing. I'm gonna tell you something, this is so fascinating. The Lord is doing the same thing he's doing in China. I talked to a man who was taught, who's, a, who's a man from China who's working with ministry in China. I said, tell me the truth, what's going on in China? He said, every church that's over 300 people is being shut down. He said, every church over 300. He said, but you know the worst part? He said, in the United States, 
Uh, Americans don't know what's going on. You think the government, you think the Democrats and Republicans, you think the governors are, trying, are keeping a thing down. He said, let me tell you what the, what the devil's doing. In China, they shut down everything because they're not letting the churches come back. They're not essential. And uh, so the churches, China's in the business right now of shutting down religion and, and entirely, churches entirely. And I'm saying, and he said, I said, what do you think about that? He says, I think it's a great time. I said, why could you, how could you say that? He said, because now for the first time, it's totally innovation. Finally, God is so upset the apple cart that we're in a place where we can innovate. He said, you realize what's going to happen? You think churches, you think Christians are going to stop meeting? He said, where are they going to meet? They're going to meet in houses. It's going to go in the neighborhoods and God's going to have to show up in a bigger way because you're not going to have the whole production depending on one or two people in a smoke machine. It's going to now be, uh, you know, now pastors, listen, there's real pastors, real churches, and don't misunderstand me. I, I pastored myself for two decades. I understand. I was trying, I was trying to be a consultant. I ended up getting in, a, in the, in a, I don't know if it was the right job for me. It's the toughest job in the world. And, uh, but what I'm saying is pastors, you can thrive. Imagine what you could do if you had a dedicated core, if you had a dedicated body that was multiplying and growing and you didn't have the expenses of a building. I mean, it's going to change. You're still a pastor. You're still anointed to be the pastor. Nobody's going to be able to have the power that you've got to gather. But listen to me, the paradigm is changing. And so the church is going to change. And of course, I'm sure that people are going to go back to churches. They're going to figure out a way around that. And, they, and, and I'm sure there's innovations coming. But my point that I'm making, and I don't want you to miss it, where is the repentance? God is putting a wrecking ball on the church and he's putting a wrecking ball on the United States and he's doing it before the next election. He's saying, what do you want? And basically, this is Haggai. Why am I saying Haggai all the time? Because Haggai is the prophet that God sent to go speak to the marketplace Christians who were Zerubbabel and to Joshua, the, the son of Shilte, who was the high priest. He went, basically went to three groups of people. The marketplace Christian, he went to the, to the nonprofit preacher uh, and teacher ministry people, and then he went to the remnant. The remnant are the intercessors and the people and the retired and, and, and the people that are hearing God and, and you guys here that are on a call like this. And the remnant had to hear the call. I'm telling you prophetically what the Lord said. The Lord said, this people says it's not time. And they're all focused on what they want and what they want to do. And I'm saying it is time. And to get your attention, I'm going to give you an economic uh, um, experience. So they got that suddenly they had this economic experience and the Lord said, now, if you'll get involved with my building project, gradually and progressively, I'm going to begin to restore. I believe that God is going to gradually and progressively restore. I don't think we have to go down into the Great Depression. I think that's the direction we're heading in. I, and, and the Lord knew this was going to happen. And by the way, I, it's, I don't know, I, I can't, I'm trying to ask the Lord, oh my God, Lord, what, what are you doing? Because the Lord says, I'm going to shake all the nations. This is Haggai chapter two, verse seven. I'm going to shake all the nations. All the nations are getting shaken, but I'm going to fill my temple with my glory. And then he says, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, which means what? God says, I'm the ultimate economist. Don't worry about the, don't worry about the economy. I got the economy thing down. Uh, now you focus in on my building project because the thing that uh, the nations desire is the kingdom of God. The thing that nations desire is prosperity. The things that nations desire is freedom. And you know what? The Bible says the desire of all the nation is coming. What are they coming to? They're going to come to the sheep nations rising. They're going to come to the nations and America must be a sheep. We've got to have a battle over this nation, but this nation is going to be a sheep nation rising. And Australia, the word of the Lord for you is you're a sheep nation rising. Singapore, a sheep nation rising. Brazil, a sheep nation rising. Guatemala, a sheep nation rising. Hungary, a sheep nation rising. Poland, a sheep nation rising. And, I, and because Jesus was promised nations when he comes back. And I'm sorry to say, what are preachers all excited about? The harvest. You know why? Because you don't have to get involved with politics, with gender, with marriage, with economics, uh, with, with, uh, with healing divisions. You don't have to get involved with that stuff if you're focused on just the harvest, evangelism. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to have a year or two or a year of awakening. And then after all the excitement dies down, the devil comes, takes hold of government because he didn't change the government. He takes a hold of media and he takes all, and next thing you know, those, you, the, like Jesus said, the house is swept clean with a nice move of God. There's a refreshing wind of the anointing. Boom, uh, the house is swept clean. But if you didn't occupy the house, those spirits are gonna be seven times worse. And you know what you get when the seven mountains get occupied seven times worse? You get the antichrist spirit persecuting the church. That's not exactly the scenario you want. If God will give you your nation, you're gonna have to put borders around your nation though, spiritually. And that's called the Nehemiah Project, how to build a wall around God's inheritance. Right now, the enemy's got in. The enemy you got Kamikaze Ortez. I can't, or, I'm trying to get her name, Ortezio, but her name is actually Kamikaze Ortez. Cortez is Kamikaze Cortez because she's trying to blow up her own ship. 
What kind of a knucklehead would go, would actually make a political statement like this? She basically is, at first she's, she's rooting for the downturn of the economy and the suffering of businesses and realizes a stupid thing. She, she basically retracts that tweet. No, then she goes on, on the record to say, don't go back to work. She's telling everybody, don't go back to work. If there was ever a time that America needs to pull together and help the businesses get back to work so that people have food and they don't have social unrest, she goes, don't go back to work. Yeah, what, what kind? This is why she's a kamikaze ortiz. She's kamikaze, kamikaze, cortez. It even works better because you've got to see it. I, kept, I thought it was an ortiz. It's cortez. All right, so uh, I want you to talk about the sheep nations rising and the evil nations are rising. Sorry to tell you this, the evil nations are rising. And where's the evil nations? Well, you know one of them had a bat in a lab that leaked. And what were they doing? It was a biological lab where they do weapons analysis, but they, 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 they weren't paying attention to what they were doing. And so China let loose the virus and this virus. And I told you, it's because China wants to rule the world and that principality and power in China has to take out the economic might of America because the economic might of America controls the present world order. And Satan is saying, it's time for me to take the kingdom, but he always does this. Don't think, you have gotta think this thing through. Satan wants China, the dragon, and America to go down in division, in flames, in social disruption, and riots in the street, in a great depression, and then, uh, then, then you're gonna watch all these hot spots of wars and rumors of wars popping up all over the place. And I'm not saying that isn't gonna happen at some point, but you see, we got Donald Trump in office because the right Cyrus is in office, so I don't think that's what God wants to do. God didn't put Lincoln in the White House in order to divide the Union. He put Lincoln in the White House in order to save the Union. This is irrefutable logic if you're prophetic. So what am I saying? I'm saying that China is a goat nation um, with a lot of sheep in it, 100 million sheep, shutting down their church. You don't get prospered and blessed as a nation shutting down the church. Now, they've had a 7% retraction in their economy. Could it be possible that China might have an internal revolution? They've got 1 million people that are in the Communist Party. They've got all the money, and they're basically trying to maintain stability. And by the way, they want their people to prosper. They want China to rule the world. But you've got a billion people that are now going to experience the disruption of this. And by the way, the, the whole world knows if it's an intelligent, literate world, except for CNN and the Washington Post. Everybody knows that China's been lying about the number of deaths. When you see that stupid statistic, I mean, we should just put, we should just write over it, fake news. Because when you see that, it's like the basketball score. We got one million deaths in the world. The United States, you know, what, uh, a couple hundred thousand, or, or no, it's 60,000. 60, I was just looking at it today, 30,000, 60,000. But it's like, you know, putting the numbers up there. First of all, the numbers are fake. Because Iran says, well, I'm not having any, any problems here. And Iran, I've, nope, nope, we've got this thing beat. No, but they're not. The people are dying. And in China, well, actually, we don't have any more deaths. But they do. They're shutting down entire cities now. They're going they're back at it again, shutting down cities. What's the point? The point is that the United States, actually, in the industrialized nations that have a free press, when you compare us to France and the UK and, this, and to, to Sweden and to Italy and to, and to the other nation, the nations that are actually recording the facts, democracies, that tell the truth, the United States is doing very good comparatively. But if you put it in the world, the way that the news media does, the deaths in the United States, in the world, oh my God, the United States. Oh. Well, the, the world statistic is a lie. It's a lie because China isn't telling you. No, of course, what does that mean? It means that there's more, <laughs> there's more people that have been infected with the coronavirus, 90, like 98% of people recover. That means a whole bunch of people are finding, a whole a lot of people have had it. Which goes to another point that I want to say this. This is very important that you know this. Why does the lockdown have to end? Because there's a certain immunity protocol. It's, it's an unusual thing that happens within, within uh, the, the human species. Is that, um, is that, is that, is that the immuni immunization develops as people are exposed. You develop kind of a resistance. And this isn't a myth. This is a fact. This explains why in one of the, in one of the um, places in like near Cologne, Germany, they were looking at an entire town where they had some ghastly, like 40% of this town had the coronavirus, and but there was hardly any fatalities. And then they checked this because the community had developed antibodies. They had an immunization that was because what they're calling the herd uh, effect. It's not a very elegant word. They're going to come up with a new one in a week, but right now it's the herd, H-E-R-D. And it means that when, you, when you're in quarantine, your, your, your body isn't building up any resistance. But when you're out there among people, 
that there's a kind of like a collective strength. Now, the people that are the most vulnerable are going to be the elderly with underlying conditions. It's, it's possible that most of the people that have died, the majority of them, have, were didn't go to the hospital with the coronavirus. There's these hilarious memes you see. A guy jumps out of a plane with no parachute. He died of coronavirus. Someone shows me a picture of Jaws. It's a man eaten by a white shark, dies of coronavirus. In other words, people are being attributed to being dying of corona. Not that there isn't tragedy and that it has to be people that have died, but the majority of these are older people that are 80 years old, 70 years old or older that have underlying conditions, which means they already had a problem and they're saying coronavirus is the primary problem. And by the way, someone told me they get paid in the hospital $1,400 for the coronavirus death versus 700. It's weird, but you actually make money in the hospital when people are dying and there's a certain and there's a certain better pay grade if it's a coronavirus situation. And by the way, there are people dying because they can't get into hospitals because they're all blocked up waiting for the great influx because they were given statistics that were supposed to have like Gavin Newsom, 20 million Californians are gonna have this. Hey, they, and in New York, the two most hysterical people was Cuomo and Gavin Newsom. La, 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 la. Nobody's even covering on the left. They're both of them, their hair's on fire. They're having a meltdown. You tell me who's going to die, Mr. President. Which one doesn't get the ventilator? Why didn't he get a ventilator? Why didn't he go invest in ventilators? What, he's so helpless. The, uh, they, and the, here's what they say. They were broke. They were broke because they don't know how to manage their money. And then in New York, what does he do? He says, the federal government's going to have to take care of all of our expenses. Everybody's going to got The states that were broke because they weren't managing their, their finances properly are supposed to take care of themselves. They're supposed to be the ones that are resourceful and the federal government's a backup. It's like when your kids leave home and they go out. The states are supposed to be independent. We forget that. The state's supposed to be supposed to be healthy and independent and the federal government is a backup plan. It's not the parent. This, this is the socialism these guys all live with where it's like Brussels, Belgium's responsible for this over here in the UK. Why is Brussels not taking care of it? Well, that's why the Brits had Brexit. They didn't want to look to the federal government. Anyway, what I want you to catch is this. Uh, that uh, the herd, you're not going to actually experience, if you're younger, you're not going to experience the, uh, the health that you need if you're going to be, you're not, getting any, you're not getting any healthier while you're in quarantine in terms of the viruses is concerned. And by the way, there are, there are breakthroughs that are coming. They have stages of, break, of, of, of release, but there's breakthroughs in technology I could tell you about in terms of the medical field. There's breakthroughs that are happening right now and being able to dis decontaminate. I can't, I can't talk to you in specifics right now about one of the products, but I just found out there's one product that's out there that for 30 days, it's a completely new science. It, whatever surface it touches, a virus can't exist on it for 30 days. And here's the amazing thing. You can, clean, you can wash your clothes with it, and it keeps the virus off of all your clothes for 30 days. And it's a hand sanitizer. You apply it once, and boom, it, for the whole 24 hours, it, 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 it blocks the virus. You put it on in the morning, it's got you all day long. So you're touching your face. You didn't know, oh, no, I touched my face. Well, it's okay. The virus can't exist on your hand. And this stuff's just coming out right now. I'm having to get a hold of some political guys because the entrepreneurs that have it are trying to figure out how to get this news to the president. And, and it, these are the legitimate business guys. Anyway, what I want you to catch is this. the sheep nations, goat nations. China, I'm telling you, China may be in for a bruising and a cruising for a bruising because they, uh, they, they, they have, uh, they have they, they, their economy is contracting. They are uh, looking to become the titan that takes over, but now they're experiencing their own economic setback. If the United States actually is not able to buy, where is China going to go? 50% of their, uh, of their uh, production is come, being bought by Americans. And so we got a little problem here. By the way, globalism. You understand the globalism problem now? That if you put all your pharmaceuticals in China, China can turn around and say, no aspirin for you. No, that aspirin hasn't been made in the United States since like uh, 2006. You know why? Every aspirin company is over in China. I mean, so you can imagine the, the horror show of all the things that you rely on on a daily basis. I don't know what iPhones are going to do. Most of them are being made in China. But that's what globalism is all about. You know, in one sense, it's about going around the world. And then we, oh, we're going to open up China and China is going to become part of the democracies. Oh, you know what? We, America made a stupid mistake. We brought China in thinking we were going to convert them to democracy and freedom. Well, and then they came up, you know, uh, 20 years later and go, I think maybe that was a mistake, Charlie. Evidently, they're converting the whole world to godless, atheistic, aggressive communism. Because that's what you got in America right now with Kamikaze Cortez. Now, uh, the, the nations that you want to keep an eye on are the classic ones, China, Iran, and Russia. I don't know why Russia is always a bad boy. 
You know, Russia's got some great Christians in there. And, I, and you know, the president says Putin's not such a bad guy. But I'm going to tell you what they're doing. Russia and China and Iran are using social media in the United States to panic Americans with false information. And they're using similar messaging. And so what's happened is the government's able to filter where these messaging are coming from. And they're coming from the uh, information, the intelligence communities of China and Russia and Iran. So those three right there have some bad principalities that are all in one accord with the Antichrist that wants to show up. And trust me, the Antichrist over there, you know, floating around in the Iranian situation. But I think the Lord is doing something. Well, no, they see the Antichrist comes out of Syria. And so, you know, then Egypt is submitted and Libya is at his feet in Ethiopia. If you read Daniel and the prophets, you see where that spirit is. But the primary point I'm making is Donald Trump is in office. We have Cyrus is rising. I think that God is going to make his people grow up and contend for the nations. I think we're going to have to change our conversation and get, you know, get less into, um, you know, what's going on in the abstract spirit realm and, and what your prophecy is and, and, uh, and, 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 and the latest, uh, latest prophecy phase, fray, you know, our, our obsession with something, and get down to this. Please hear me. That the real thing we gotta look at is, hear what the Holy Spirit is saying about your assignment in making America great, in standing up for the, re re the recovery of your country. This is not the hour to catch this. Revival, everyone loves revival, because revival for us is, woo, power anointing, presence, getting drunk, falling down, shaking. That's of course if you're Pentecostal. If you're evangelical, it's more focused like, you know, evangelism. And not that we don't care about evangelism, but everybody's talking about a billion soul harvest. No one's talking about the nations. This move is not about, at this point, the billion soul harvest. It's about the reformation. The move of God is about reforming. That's fake news media. We got to whack it. I'm telling you, there's a slingshot I release in Jesus' name, an agreement with you that God is going to release a, a slingshot to the forehead of that false prophet in media. Bam! It's gonna come down, be driven back. There's gonna be new media that's gonna be telling the truth. That the same thing's gonna happen in government. The Lord's gonna strip uh, and expose the stupidity, the selfishness, the shallowness, and the incompetence that would plunder America with this getting $7 trillion. And then there was this money, I'm so sorry to say, I'm praying right now, but the small businesses were ripped off. The small businesses is what the devil wants to take out of America. It's not just the big businesses. I think that, that many of them are going to make it. That, that it's the small businesses. And so that's where 70% of the jobs come from. But I'm praying for the small businesses right now. And I'm praying for the veil of a wrecking ball revelation. I pray that the news media is going to start doing exposés on the wasted money, the wasted spending, the selfish agenda. If there's one thing Americans have no tolerance for now, it is the revelation of self-serving use of, of, uh, of working your own agenda in the midst of this panic. You should not be. Uh, working to your own advantage in this thing. We should be working for America. And it, may God expose with a slingshot, bam, the forehead of Goliath in the government, in the Senate, in the Congress, and in, the, in this presidential election. I pray for the slingshot moments, bam, when Goliath gets stunned in the forehead. But we're praying for that to happen in the local level too. We're praying for your community, in your city, where you've got some tin horn, matador, luchador, um, you know, a uh, sheriff, mayor, judge, uh, who is who is telling you that you're in a non-essential, you've got to stay indoors, you've got to lose your house, lose your economy, lose your nation, and that uh, you've got to stay indoors or else they don't have the right necessarily to do that. Judge Napolitano says the governors don't have the constitutional authority to make you stay indoors. Um, Christians are doing this just out of the take thought for what is noble in the sight of all perspective of life. All right, well, my broadcast is almost over and I didn't get to the prophecy yet. China, Russia, Iran. God must clean the government house. It's not the nation. Iranian Christians are beautiful and they need to have some pressure put upon these governments. China needs that communist government regime to be broken. Russia, uh, what are you gonna do? Putin's gonna be there, you know? Putin seems to be there, but there's gonna have to be a change in the game that they're playing. And it all comes with exposure. I'd like to see the exposure happen. Everybody talks about Russia, Russia, Russia. I don't know, uh, but they keep bringing up Russia. I'd like to know what the proof is. But, this, uh, but this, this information I'm getting from a reliable source. Now, North Korea, my friend Kim Clement, he prophesied evidently uh, some years ago that, that the leader of North Korea, and I think it was after that, uh, this, that he had, had had an assassin that had smeared someone who was his brother in a foreign airport with a toxic poison that once it got into his skin, within an hour or two, he was paralyzed and dead. I mean, this is a ruthless dictator. And so Kim Clement, he prophesied, and by the way, share this broadcast. I need you to share this. 
Kim Clement prophesied, and he said that, uh, that the leader of North Korea, Kim Jong, that God has said that you have, you know, that uh, the, the handwriting has been on the wall. Many, many take out apartheid. You have been weighed in the balance and found wanting. And the Lord says that you, he's going to be brain dead. He's going to be brain dead. Well, nobody knows what's happening right now, but Dennis Rodman is praying for him. So he knows something's gone, something's going on. Or I think he's praying for him. He's cheering for him, I guess. Uh, but the fact of the matter is this could be the prophecy. This could be the prophecy. And, and I think God was extending mercy to him, just like mercy to the United States. But we think this mercy goes on forever. Mercy just means that there's a stay of, of a judgment that is, that is there. And you know what? You can get right off of that mercy ground, and there it is. Bam. There's a period of time. There's a period of time for repentance. And America's in the window right now. We're heading into Pentecost. The prophets have been saying, between Passover and Pentecost, God is going to deal with this virus, and God's going to be able to tamp it down, and then where the church is going to go into Pentecost, and it's going to be the upper room. When is that supposed to be? Anybody got the date here? What is it, the 15th? Is it, uh, is it like uh, the 15th of the next month, or is it soon? I've got to figure out when is Pentecost. I think it's the 15th, but the fact of the matter is that everybody's focusing on, yay, Pentecost, the outpouring, but that's not the point. Where's the repentance? God is going to judge. He's going to judge. And if we, if we would humble ourselves and, and in a sense, position ourselves before God and prostrate ourselves for the outpouring, I believe that there'll be the Pentecost outpouring of the empowerment. But I'll tell you what's going to happen. The empowerment is going to come to deal with reformation in this nation. See that? It's going to be the nation. It's not just going to be our private little party with our, our, our own, uh, you know, harvest field and our viral social media. It's, that's, not, that's not God's idea of changing the world. That's, we, we play too small. You're going to have a billion soul harvest? Why don't you take a couple of nations? Isn't it great that in Psalm 2, Jesus wasn't promised a billion soul harvest? He was promised nations. It's interesting when Satan goes to tempt Jesus. Remember this? He's on the Mount of Temptation. What did the devil say to him? He said, bow down. He shows them all of the kings of the world and says, I'll give you the harvest if you'll bow down. Why didn't the devil tempt Jesus with the harvest? Why did he say the kingdoms? I'll give you all the kings of the world. I don't think we understand this that Jesus created the nations and the earth and the world and this whole thing was created by Jesus for Jesus and so Jesus isn't glorified until he's honored as the king of glory and that, that's not just the savior of your soul, that's the ruler of heaven and earth. He's a ruling spirit and he wants and he has dominion promised to him and we put it off till, well, it's not the time now but that's what Haggai said that people keep saying it's not time it's not time so they're all focused on their own little projects their own little ministry their own little vision of what the world's like and I said it is time and the Lord's talking to us right now it is time it's time for the nations Does that make sense it's reformation time and if you have reformation it's going to take a revival to have reformation the outpouring is coming on the day of Pentecost but I think the repentance has to come too. We have to surrender ourselves and our agendas. And there's so much selfish ambition still in the body of Christ because even people that are looking forward to the great awakening, there's a whole lot of ambition. I'm running into a whole bunch of ambitious people. Christians everywhere, Lance, we're gonna do this, Lance, this, uh, Lance, that. I'll tell you what, the real the person who's hearing God is saying, Lord, I gotta judge myself. I gotta get, before you gotta empty myself of my own agenda so that I can be filled with your spirit. The last thing we need now is a bunch of self-appointed great awakeners. Hey, hey. It sounds, it sounds like that I want to speak Yiddish. All right. So, Kim Clement prophesies brain dead. So is this going to happen? Well, I don't know. Nobody's telling me any news in North Korea. But uh, if that happens, remember the prophet prophesied that God was going to, going to deal with, this, uh, going to deal with the, the, uh, the ruler of North Korea. And then he prophesied the great reunion of South and North Korea. I wouldn't have reunited them at a time like this because it's economic chaos. But evidently, there's a reunification of North Korea and South Korea. By the way, in Pyongyang, which is the capital of North Korea, that was where the greatest revival and outpouring of the spirit took place from Azusa Street. It went to Pyongyang, the capital of North Korea, was where Azusa went. So Azusa went to that capital city in North Korea, and from there it touched Asia. So God put his finger down in the capital of North Korea in, in, in sorry, not 2008. That would have been history we missed. It was 1908. Azusa was 1908. Did you catch that? I said 2008. 1908 was Azusa. So, here's what I want you to do. We're going to ask the Lord to, uh, to deal with the fake news. Right, bam, got to knock that thing in the, in the forehead. Take it out. And here's what I, I want to say to you. Find a verse from the, from the Bible, and it has to do with the shaking. The Lord has been telling me the awakening and the shaking go together. Uh, evidently, and so take a look. This is, and I wrote this. I wrote this around uh, three, about, about a year ago. 
and I, and I wrote it and it's gonna, uh, I, I was writing, I said the great shaking is gonna release the awakening. And I wasn't even sure what I was writing about, but I just read, I read it today. And so Acts 16, it says this. It happened that as Paul <clears throat> was going uh, to prayer in Acts 16, verse 16, <clears throat> excuse me, a certain slave girl possessed with the spirit of divination that brought her masters much gain. Well, sometimes business people make money off of people that are filled with demons. And the girl followed Paul and us saying, oh, these are servants of the most high God. So you got false advertising here. And it was weird. Paul was going nuts because this woman was filled with demons and she's, a, she's a basically a psychic and she's saying, and these guys are the real deal. And he wasn't looking for a, sometimes uh, you don't want an endorsement from the wrong person. But when her masters saw that, uh, what Paul did was he commanded the demon to come out of her. And so her ability to divinate, get this man, she has such a prophetic gift that she was predicting probably corn, buy metal, buy this, buy that. And whatever she was predicting, evidently the people made money because it said they made, made a lot of money off by her fortune telling. I'll tell you something, the occult sometimes is in the business community. Not, not sometimes, the occult is in the business community. That's getting shaken up now. I'm not talking about small business, I'm talking about the big shots with the billion dollar corporations. They all got psychics and people like that around them. If you don't got Jesus, you got, you got witchcraft. So listen to this. Paul commands the spirit to go up, but when our masters saw their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace. Uh-oh, we have an apostolic marketplace move here. So you Zerubbabels that are out there, the Haggai prophesied to, get ready for some shaking going on in the marketplace. And they said, look, these, these people, are, they, these Jews are troubling our city. They're the reason why the city's got a problem right now. And they're teaching things that aren't, uh, aren't authorized by the New World Order. They're not speaking on the college campus what is uh, politically correct. And so uh, we want to lock them up. So the multitude rose up against them. This is unfortunate. The populace of the multitude rises up because of fake news, bad advertising. And when they laid many stripes on them, this is sad. Innocent people get beat. Innocent people get beaten. Innocent people get thrown in the prison. And they commanded the jailer to keep them. And so they're in the inner prison and their feet are fastened and they've been unjustly beaten and they were only obeying God. And so listen to this. At midnight, this is so convicting. At midnight, Paul and Silas weren't trying to hire a lawyer, weren't kvetching, weren't trying to explain in Instagram how come they got their Facebook account shut down. At midnight, they were praying and singing hymns. They were worshiping. They were worshiping and praying and singing and praying and singing and praying. And the other prisoners, they probably started off with, shut up, shut up. And after a while, this presence was coming in and they were all, they were all like aware, oh, this is weird. These guys are singing and praying and they're creating their own atmosphere. And heaven starts listening to them pray and God's listening to them sing and he's getting into the rhythm of whatever they're singing and God starts tapping his foot. And the moment he taps his foot, there's an earthquake. Suddenly, verse 26, there was a great earthquake, so the foundations of the prison were shaken. The shaking is going to the foundations of the system. God is restoring our respect for constitutional order. I'm going to say something. We were given an inspired document that we treat so trivially because we don't value the Constitution. We don't value the Bill of Rights. We don't care about our history, but we're all about to find out what it is that these guys did as the fathers of this nation to give you a chance at having an experiment in the nations that is different than every other nation. And so what happened is these guys had the earthquake and the foundations were shaken. And immediately when the foundations were shaken, all the doors were open and everyone's chains were loose. It's quite a miracle. This means that every prisoner, basically God said, eh, I think I'll let them all go. And so the mercy of God came down and even the undeserving prisoners who probably deserved to be in prison in the first place, they all got their prison, they all got their prison release, but they were getting their prison release with the gospel. And the keeper of the prison comes in and draws a sword to kill himself because you know what the Romans did, you know what, you know what the, in the Romans territory, if you, had, if you had custody of a prisoner and let the prisoner go, uh, or if they somehow escaped, it didn't matter whether you knew about it or not, they killed you. And why would they kill you? Well, it would discourage the next guy. I had a good excuse. I wasn't even there. It doesn't matter. We'll kill you. So he's ready to draw his sword and just, I might as well end my life now because all the prisoners are gone, let alone one. I'm done. But Paul yells at the guy, do not harm yourself for we're all here. And he called for a light and ran in and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? I love this line. Paul says to him, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You should be saved. You and your house. I was talking to Annabelle last night. I said that word for house, that word for house is the word oikos. I learned this from Dennis Peacock. The word oikos, 
uh, is the word root word for economics. In other words, you shall be saved, you and your economic household. I want you to hear this promise right now. As the shaking is happening and you're seeing the economy shaking, those that have uh, been under the blood, that have been in the Passover, that have been, have been in a sense in the Passover with God while this plague, while this chapter of history is going on, God is visiting the households. He's restoring your sons and daughters. There's an anointing. I prophesy right now. It's too bad. A hundred people just left the broadcast. We got three thousand. We got three thousand eight hundred people on, but a hundred people left at the wrong time. I just felt like prophesying. So here's here's what the Lord is saying. He is sending an anointing to your sons and daughters right now to put them into the inheritance that He has in your bloodline. He is activating the believers now with a new authority to pray and to and to bind and to loose as never before. For those that have been quarantined with God have marked the doorposts and lintels of their mind and their heart with the blood. And God says, I've been with you in this moment. And even as you shall be saved, you and your house, the Lord says, you and your oikos, you and your economics is wrapped up together in a bundle. I'm going to take care of you and your family. I'm going to take care of you and your house. I'm going to take care of you and I'm moving on your sons and daughters right now to give them liberty in the spirit, to deliver them of the addictions, compulsions, the distractions. I am tearing the demons out of the bloodlines of my elect and I am breaking the curses of generations past and I'm sending the spirit of Elijah. Very shortly, the Lord says, there's going to be fresh voices rising up with authority. They're going to speak in the halls of government. They're going to speak in the media. They're going to be new voices. There'll be voices that are going to rise up and say the words that I put in their mouth. And the Spirit of God says, and the voice of the Lord is going to contend with the voice of the Antichrist. The voice of the Lord is going to contend with the voice of the false prophets. And the spirit of the true prophets is going to arise. And there's going to be a, a movement, says the Lord. It's going to be a hot summer. I believe it's going to be a hot summer because the Lord's raising the heat on the enemy right now. And there's a shaking. Why does there shaking come when there's an awakening? Why is there a shaking with an awakening? Look at this. The moment that in the midnight hour, at midnight, means when it seems darkest. If you'll sing and if you'll worship, if you'll be thankful, if instead of being agitated and angry and having political opinions, now there's a time to have them, there's a time to shut up and focus on God. It's the midnight hour, they were praying and worshiping, but it's like you and your house at the midnight hour, and suddenly there's a great shaking in the foundations of things. You know why? Because God is shaking thrones and principalities and powers. He's shaking the devil out of nations. He's shaking the strongholds that are in the heavenly places. Because that's where spiritual way he's shaking the thrones of darkness. That's Haggai, read Haggai chapter 2. I'm shaking the thrones. And then the Lord, then look at the, then the keeper of the prisoner had an awakening. You want to see the harvest come in? Well, there he is. He's the keeper of the prison. God's going to bring an awakening to people that have authority over schools and authority over hospitals and authority uh, over businesses and authority in a political office, in the mayor's office. There's an awakening coming right now because the shaking that God's doing is going to awaken the harvest and there's going to be a harvest of souls coming in. But remember this, they're coming in for the reformation, a revival of God. It's a revival for reformation. It's a revival for reformation. And, uh, and so believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be delivered from this moment and you're going to see you and your house saved. I believe, Lord God, and even for Korea right now, North Korea, that there'll be a glorious unification coming for the South and the North. We, we, will, we'll, we will watch to see the prophet's words and see if this is the moment for their fulfillment. We pray for China. We pray for Russia. We pray for Iran. For the believers that are there, Lord, may their prayers now begin to shake the foundations and may there be a breaking of the prison cells where, they, where people have been held in captivity and may there be many uh, 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 a salvation coming to the jailers and may there be a salvation move that is an awakening move, Lord, to the structures and systems that we have in our country. The reformation move of God is coming. I'm telling you, it's a reformation move of God. But where's the repentance? Where's the repentance? We have been focusing upon our own prosperity, our own blessing, as blessed as we are. Look at America. America, not happy with what it's got, just discontented. You listen to the left-wingers, and, and, and they're just miserable all the time. They're just, uh, they're just miserable all the time. They're like, I, I always said, they're like, they're, they're, uh, they're like, um, they're, they're, they're just miserable. And, and, and then, they, then instead of being thankful, 
Like the Bible said in the last days, they will be, they will be ungrateful. And having, the, having the best of all economic recoveries, having hot and cold water, having air conditioning, having heat, having a cell phone. I mean, my gosh, we got, we got plumbing. You, you, the average poor person in, in a, with, with, those, with those things and a car uh, and food is living better than 99% uh, of the people and the earth uh, did uh, you know, for, for the last uh, 2,000 years. So God, there's been a blessing that's become to mankind, but we're ungrateful, we're not thankful, it's not enough. And so the, that discontent, I believe, is, is something which must be broken in, in the Christian's lives. Godliness with contentment is great gain. And so we wanna, we wanna thank the Lord right now for China is going to have a breaking of the uh, prison of bad government. Iran, the breaking of the bad government. And the sheep nations are rising. We pray for Brazil, we pray for those nations I talked about, but you just call it your nation. Canada, oh, we got so many people from Canada talk, talk to me all the time. Yes, in Jesus' name. Canada is coming around. You, you, got, you, got, to, uh, you got a battle like we've got. But in Jesus' name, your, call, your nation is called to be a sheep nation, not a crazy nation. With, with uh, Trudeau, it's a crazy nation. But you're called to be a sheep nation. So I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. That, uh, and this is our verse, verse 26 of chapter 17, that God has made from one blood every nation. We will not allow racism. We will not allow uh, that, that what is xenophobia is the, is, the, is the hatred of other races. Christians don't have that. You can love your nation and want to see your nation succeed and love another guy and another guy's nations. Christians are the only people in the world that are all high-fiving whenever another Christian wins. They don't care what race, what, what country is from. They're just happy there's a testimony. But God is made from one blood every nation. So stop this racial division nonsense. We're all made from Adam and Eve and then, then God did a unique thing with the nations to dwell on the face of the earth, and he's determined their appointed times and boundaries of their dwellings. Do you realize that America has an appointed time, and then there's boundaries? And right now our boundaries are global. Our currency is global. The dollar is global. But the Lord says, I'll tell you what, those boundaries and those pre-appointed times aren't forever so that they, the nations, might seek the Lord. In other words, you're given a period of time for the purpose of seeking God. God is saying, you better seek me, America, you better seek me in the hope that you might grope after me. It's like groping, groping. It's like being in the dark. God, where are you? Uh, but, but they, that they might find him, though he's not very far. What Paul is saying is God gave time to every nation. He gave boundaries to their physical size, and he gave boundaries to their might and their authority in the earth, and that there, it was done so that they had a time period to seek him, and when the clock is done, it's over. Well, we're at the midnight hour and we're singing and praising. We're consecrating ourselves because we're gonna see miracles done coming up before Pentecost and on Pentecost. Your family's coming into the kingdom like never before. And we're going to arrest not only the plague, but we're gonna see the arresting of the economic decline. And we're gonna see a reviving of the stones. And we're gonna rise up as a remnant to go. We're gonna stand with God, righteous government. We're gonna stand, we're gonna see this constitution, this bill of rights. We're gonna become far more literate than we've ever been before on what God gave us. We're not letting the devil take from us. And I'm thanking you, Lord, that you're raising up a mighty a move of God that the uh, Kim used to call it, Kim Clement called it the gathering of the dangerous. And we had a conference called the gathering of the dangerous. Well, you don't see yourself as dangerous, but I'll tell you something. As far as hell is concerned, you're dangerous. And I'm calling out the dangerous right now. The ones that hell doesn't want to see, hear my message. The one that hell doesn't want to see, hear my message. We need dangerous intercessors and dangerous, wealthy um, millionaires and billionaires. Uh, we need dangerous people with callings for the political realm, people that were going to go forth and they'll pierce the darkness. They'll pierce the darkness. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost and I believe the Spirit and the Lord of life wants you to, uh, to plunder uh, with, with, with heaven in the next season. And so do not fear this shaking, but press in, press in between now and Pentecost, press in to that uh, shaking that brings the awakening because the awakening is coming to the harvest and you're going to see the boundaries of America are going to not go down and collapse on our watch. God didn't put Donald Trump in office right now to preside over the annihilation of the United States. He didn't put Lincoln in office for the destruction of the Union. He didn't put Washington in for the failure of the revolution. He didn't put Churchill in so that they could all end up speaking German. God puts you on the earth right now because you're the remnant that gets the awakening. You're the remnant in Hosea that gets the stir. The stir is the word for awakening in Hebrew. All right, my friends. Hey, small businessmen, if, you got, if you're a small business, I want to help you. I'm serious about this. I want to help you. 
go to patriotbusinessalliance.com. Um, go to patriotbusinessalliance.com, sign the petition I'm sending up to the president to get America's business back because you guys got ripped off. You got ripped off. You, there was money that was supposed to come to you and you didn't get it. And, you, you, and it's because who gets the money first? All the cronies. It's the big dudes, it's the people that are the, that's, it's the money people in Washington. And I'm afraid there's gonna be a backlash that's gonna come out. And it should, because when the truth comes out, a lot of the struggling small businesses that were, that were worried about their employees, that love their employees, and they, every, everybody's like so stupid on this subject. You listen to people on TV, and my God, I love Senator Cruz. But in Washington, they haven't got a clue. Small businesses are not 500 or less. That's not a small business, that's a big company. A small business is, is, uh, is five or six people. It's a maximum of like 25 employees. They don't get it. These are families. Small businesses are like families. Patriot Business Alliance, sign the petition. Give me your name. I'm gonna put you into a special group that I'm gonna give every entrepreneurial in insight, resource, even if I can get a hold of funding, I'm gonna do everything I can to help small businesses that are Christian small businesses. 10 million of you are in the United States. And uh, that 10 million is 40 million people's jobs. We cannot see that go down. So go to, small, go to the um, Patriot Business Alliance and, and sign a petition and, uh, and I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep in touch. By the way, all of you can go there and sign a petition to the president. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name that you're raising up the spirit of Elijah, that you're raising up the spirit of Gideon, that you're raising up the spirit of Gideon. It's like my friend David Lane always signs off that God's raising up Rahab's and Gideon, Gideon's. Well, I'm praying right now. Let the Gideons rise up and uh, may fire come out from heaven and the spirit of the Lord come down upon the remnants that are gonna turn the battle at the gates. Share this with your friends and let's stay connected uh, because here in our studio, we're gonna start the war room. It's gonna be a great new broadcast. It's gonna be looking at the great awakening. We're gonna have great awakening news. It's gonna be coming to you every week. And then we're gonna be looking at the economic uh, battle and the economic recovery. We're gonna show you what's happening. We're gonna look at the geopolitical battle of the sheep and goat nations. We're gonna cover geopolitical. And we're gonna cover uh, the, uh, the trending topics of what's happening as the virus gets crushed. And Lord help us if the, if the crazy people uh, that want a one world system use this virus as a way of identifying everybody with a microchip or with a wristband. And I'm hearing all kinds of ideas so that everybody can be identified and put, you don't really want that. Trust me, we'll cover that. But those are the subjects we want to cover about uh, what God is doing, what that spirit of Antichrist is doing, um, how the economy is, is going to battle is going, and the political battle with Donald Trump and with geopolitical other nations rising. We're going to be covering that right here in our studio, and you're going to be here with us. God bless you. Send me a note and I'll read it. Hey, if you like this video today, you could help me out by leaving some comments and, you know, you could vote up this video. Just give me a like sign and uh, click on like so that I know if this is working for you. And also share it with your friends because our entire movement is based upon people sharing ideas with other people. And if you want to be regularly notified about these broadcasts, then you want to subscribe so that you'll be able to get the latest material as soon as it comes out.